welcome back to Southern Latitudes. Thanks for joining us again for a third part of a four-part series. We're talking about each of my gardens, the main gardens, uh, the successes and the failures there. So next, we're going to be talking about the salsa garden. It was really hard to find some failures, but there's a couple to share with you. Mostly, we had a very, very successful first year in this garden. Come on, let's look. So in these back rows um, here, the first, uh, let's say, three, four cattle panels, we had nothing but tomatoes in these cattle panels. The garden was started and established in January. We laid down mushroom compost, and then after we did that, we started putting um, transplant babies in here. Mostly I did the Camparis back here and I did what we're calling the Sunset Tomato. It's just a regular Publix grocery store tomato with seeds. And wow, did they just fruit and fruit and fruit. And we just were overrun with tomatoes, which was such a great thing. So all that went very well. And in these upper rows, we had um, cucumbers I had up here. Uh, oh, I guess that's right. We had four sets of tomatoes and then we had cucumbers up here and they did amazing too. I'll have to show you some old photos of that. Uh, but you know, cucumbers die out pretty soon and so we knew the heat was going to kick on in Florida come May. And we started, I had started all my peppers. So we transplanted those on into here easily and Wow, are we having just the most amazing pepper year ever. I have tried several new varieties. These are called the Aros Compolio peppers right here. And and I had to be extremely patient. Um, the reviews on Baker Creek website, therareseeds.com, they people were gracious enough to leave good feedback saying, be patient on these and then once they do they put out like crazy well that's exactly what I have found to happen in my case as well they are just bonkers now that they're established they had to grow look at this this one over here I'm not kidding this is close to six feet back here five well I'm five feet so it's over that it's probably over six feet just amazing and loaded this one's got green ones everywhere but it's loaded too and behind it you'll see some more red ones just crazy good uh, in the front here I have a red Marconi let's see can you see that okay and back here I had really hard time with I had one dying pepper here the whole time we just ripped it out for the tomatoes but plants number two and three on this row did excellent too. They didn't start very well, but um, they are definitely finishing strong. I think they just need a little bit more time to establish. I don't know, maybe the soil was a little less nutritious over this way uh, or a little less sun. Now these are my Midnight Dreams bell peppers. They are a purple pepper. I uh, didn't absolutely love the flavor. Well, one of my kids did, but uh, the rest, rest of us weren't terribly thrilled. But they do great. They, they grow very prolific. And um, look, there's another one. They're all over. Uh, they're not big, but they're definitely all over. Oh, look. Can you see that? I got love bug. Love. I got love bug kissed. So... Okay, so I'm sure, I'm, I'm hoping you've noticed by now, whenever I touch a tree, a plant, we're seeing white flies everywhere. There you go. That was kind of a good way. It's a little overexposed on the camera. So you can see those white flies. That has been my nemesis in this garden. Really, it's starting everywhere, but it started here first. And as you can see on the back side of all these leaves, are white flies. Right, can you see that? Okay. Against all these beautiful peppers. I have what's going to treat them. I got all the ingredients out ready to do it and I thought, you know what? Just forget it. There's so many and you got to get the back side. You're supposed to start with the hose and then you start with like soaps and oils. There's another good view of it. But um, 
it's just such a mess and, and I didn't think I'm ever going to get it all anyhow. So I have left it. They suffered through, but I'm going to guess these peppers will be here long after the white flies. As soon as that first cold snap hits Florida Zone 9B, uh, which should be, they're saying maybe about another 10 days from now, when that cool snap hits, we should start seeing those die back and disappear. Now what is this? This is my Clemson spineless okra. I got a whole bunch here that need picking. That's crazy. But um, here's another success. Look at this. It is so long, it fell over. Folks, these are, I have multiple, and, and they're just all starting to tip finally. Um, tip right over to the side. I can't even pick them anymore. They're, I don't know. Actually, I'm going to get a measuring tape, and we're going to measure them. And I'll put it down here in the, in the corner. But um, heavy, super heavy, I don't pick them like I should. I pick the short ones down here. See, there's a second row uh, where they've come off the bottom of the stalks. Can you see that? That's been a success too. They come off the bottom. And so then I have a whole nother crop of okra down here. If I wanted to just lop the tops, I could just grow okra again from the bottoms. That's been really cool over here. And I am starting to eat okra again because it took like two, three weeks off. I just wasn't hungry for them anymore. So here's another success. These corbachis were new to me. They're starting again. They didn't like the extreme heat of Florida summers, um, as in just August and September only. But they are really, really loving now that we're starting October. They're starting to bloom everywhere again. And let me come on the other side of this garden. They're doing just amazing. We are pickled. I have everything dried. You name it. The peppers have been extremely good this year. That's what a korbachi looks like. And in the beginning, man, they were double, triple this length. This is kind of small, really. But these are the summer ones. That's ready to pick right there. Oh my goodness. So, I don't know if you can see that, but more ladybugs. There's a pair. And they're breeding. Oh, there's another pair. That's awesome. There's another. Oh man, I guess I found. I found the Niagara Falls of honeymoon places. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, these are our ALMA, Alma Paprika Peppers. These I'm just going to probably pull. They've seen their better days. They have produced like crazy for me. Boy, they were thick. And I've dried them, and we have plenty of paprika to last us through the winter into the next spring. Um, I will let what's on here finish up. That won't be too long from now. These are all orange. Um, and then I'll just pull these plants and let whatever come in here for the winter. But this has been a very good producer. I'm probably going to add an extra paprika variety next year. And I have forgotten the name of that, but I'll let you know when that happens. And over here, look at this. Can you see that? There are... This is just lack of me getting out here. One, two, three, four, five, six bell peppers all in red out here on um, this I think this looks like just one plant in particular oh seven eight is going and this one I'm leaving for seed ah, I don't know it's awfully juicy oh rotten <laughs> maybe not that one for seed but I'll let one of these go for seed just fantastic and I'm gonna save that seed these are bullnose bell peppers if I forgot to say that earlier they produced excellent. This is probably the best pepper crop I've had in eon years. Even if you exclude all the new bell peppers and other peppers, like I, peppers, like I've never done Tabasco before. And this is a pretty simple crop, doesn't require anything. It produces heavily. And this came from seed. And this is my height, which is five feet. Um, did excellent. Didn't have a, a, you know, a lot of growth down here which is fine. I've seen some stay short, but this one should
shot up pretty high. And um, this was a later producing one compared to its brother, which started early. But I see it's even put on a second crop. Look, it's got blooms on it. Isn't that fantastic? This, and I've made one big jar of Tabasco. It's in the fridge already. And so I'll probably make another jar of Tabasco and give it away. That'll be excellent there. Um, oh my word, is there even, yeah. Wow, there's so many peppers. I'm just one really, really blessed mama. So, okay, okra was always here, but let's talk about what's not here. As you can see, there's a big blank in the back here. See that big blank? That is where my corn was. And corn was not a success, but I don't know that it was my fault in general because corn is just difficult in Florida. We have a lot of bugs and my goal is to clear this off. I had some other things planned for here, but I actually put them in other sections of the garden. So I still need something to put in here. And my thought was maybe I'll try a pumpkin again. And then I thought, no, you know what? I'm gonna try corn, a winter corn, and see if I can't get that stuff to produce in the winter because we'll have less bugs. We'll have that little extra time frame if we don't get a frost. And maybe I'll be successful with corn. If not, then that's probably my fourth or fifth time trying corn, and then I give up. It's just not worth it because it's so cheap in the stores. Although I prefer to have my own organic homegrown corn, GMO free, if you know what I mean. So anyhow, I might try a little experiment in here, maybe half and half with something else. So that's what I'm doing uh, in here. But it was good to try corn one more time since the ground was so fertile and the mushroom compost was great. I thought it'd be worth the one more try, you know. Over here you can see my jalapenos. And it's kind of funny because the ones that were so strong were down there and they died. And I just, I think the heat just got to them and they're not on irrigation. These guys have survived so far. Sorry, there's a pumpkin vine on top of this one. Um, I'm gonna clean them up, clean this whole area up really. and see what's salv salvageable so that might be a failure but kind of on my part they just didn't get water and I just didn't care enough very sadly um, so I don't know if you've been following me for any length of time you know that I've had this mystery pumpkin that doesn't produce and this is towards the end of it this is like the 80 to 100 foot section I did wipe out it was my greatest success that I never even worked on. It started way past that pine over there. And some went that way, and then the rest came along this whole fence. So, like I said, it's my greatest success that I didn't even try it. If you look at growth on top, if you look at pumpkins, it was a massive failure. Uh, but that would be more the heat than anything on my part. Yeah, they just... It, it'll make little girls, but they just don't pop out and produce anything. I'm trying to find one for you. Uh, but it's okay. I did have to wipe out the middle section because it was just creeping into the salsa garden. There's my first blooms that I've actually made it all the way through. I think we might get some fruit set out of these. This week is going to be a wonderful week 
of uh, much cooler weather. Highs of mid 80s, mid 80s to low 80s. Our nights at, are going to be anywhere from 68 to 71. So that's the magic number. We're going to start seeing some good stuff happening from here on out in the tomato section. Here's a really good example of those white flies that have been overtaking my garden. And we had a really good hard rain this morning. Look, we still have some nice predator insects. Thank you, ladybugs. I have tons of ladybugs in my yard. We did release an entire tub of ladybugs one year. And I think it was like 500 of them. And we bought them, I believe, at an Ace Hardware. Could have been a pet store. But anyhow, we, we got them. And yeah, they're doing the best they can, but there's way too much food here for them. Now, white flies aren't exactly killing the plants, at least not quickly. They're definitely not killing the fruit. They're not bothering the fruit at all. None of the peppers are affected. But as they overtake the leaf, the leaf is slowly dying. dying. As you can see, it's not even brown or anything. It just, it comes right off. Some of that could be part of the dry snap that we had up past seven to 10 days. But I also noticed that it was doing this before that. So some way, somehow they're affecting the leaves and this is the mess that it makes. It just leaves a whole bunch down here. I have uh, each pepper sitting, um, with with black ground cover surrounding it and I kind of wish I hadn't done that now because as you see they're trapped the plants are really huge and yet they're trapped in there um, I can't take the ground cover up to really clean it so what I've been doing is take the blower or a rake through here and I did get this whole section cleaned up which looks much better and this part's easy because these I just undo and completely clean out. But yeah, when you have plants in the way, don't put your ground cover uh, completely 100% around any of your plants. That is something I've learned. Uh, I saw other people burning holes um, and putting the plants in the center. And I suppose that's fine for them and where they go. But here in Florida where our annuals can sometimes turn into perennials, that's not really something you always want to do. That's something to rethink uh, because Florida, especially 9B and maybe even higher, your annuals look a whole lot different. They start looking like perennials. If any of you are really good with avocado trees, please let me know what this is. It seems to be affecting several of the leaves. It's not overtaking the whole plant. But they have that rust spot. I may take it down to the county extension agents. Like just grab some leaves. Always double bag it in a brown paper bag. And take it to them and let them be the judge of what's going on. You double bag it so that if there's spores with anything you send in. That it does not spread throughout their office. And then they don't carry it to, far carry it to farms. So look at that. There's little buds inside the node area where the leaf stem is coming out. I wonder if that means this upcoming year I'll finally get maybe a little bit of mang not mangoes. I want mangoes so bad, can you tell? Avocados. Anyhow, these are my dwarf everbearing mulberries. I have a pair of them, which is so great. You don't need a pair of them, but I just so happen to have a pair of them. And um, no mulberries yet. Of course they were probably less than 10 inches high maybe six inches when they came to me and uh, they're over my head which means they're probably five seven to six feet and they're aren't they gorgeous along with the zinnia there but um yeah they look good I did lop the top Let's see if you could see that right there I lopped it and they have sent out side shoots, which is what I was hoping for, and trying to get these things a little bushier. Um, but so far, no fruit, so maybe we'll start getting that in the spring. This 
Do you see this? This is an asparagus. It's only one. But it looks like over here, I have another one popping out. We could have two asparagus for dinner. No, seriously, I don't know what I'm doing at all with asparagus. But I do know one thing. Something's going very well in this garden. And this probably was a new asparagus. And it looked just like a regular asparagus top, but then it fanned out. You see that? It kind of looked like a dill fern or something like that. But it fans out. And there you go, you have that. It just became that. I should have showed you earlier in the week when it wasn't that. And then it puts these little bitty... Can you see those dots? I don't know if you can. It's a little bitty flower. These haven't bloomed. Let's see. There's, there's some that have bloomed. They're a little bit more yellow. Oh, they may just be an early day bloomer. I'm kind of out here right before bed. Here we go. And I assume that's where my seeds are going to eventually come from. Um, I'm trying to think. I might have had about six to ten seeds originally. And, of course, they all went... Well, maybe had three or four. I have to go back and check the video. But I only had so many actually make it. And um, from that, I've gotten all of this. You see? And it's actually beautiful. I was just letting it go, not touching it, not doing anything. I thought I was going to do research, and then I noticed this massive one came out. And I thought, oh, maybe I should start going. I love to watch Hollis and Nancy's Homestead. They have uh, succession videos of uh, how to grow things, and they're awesome that way. And I was going to see what Hollis thought. I had already watched his series, but I, I really need to re-watch the whole thing. Um... And, of course, his seasons were from when he was in Virginia. He's now in Florida, so, um, I don't know, maybe Pete Canaris, maybe somebody else can help me with that, or maybe one of you guys who watches can help me. But, at this point, that looks like an edible asparagus. And I know for them, they tend to get those things in spring, but in Florida, what does that mean for 9B? Um... Does that mean we're getting asparagus now? I don't know. I just went through here. Do you see this ground? This was the high nitrogen oak mulch that came off of my tree. And I just dumped it here. I changed sides. It could be that that high nitrogen is bringing out the asparagus, the edible asparagus. So, boy, I sure like not to know Everything's so different in Florida. Maybe somebody in California or the guy in... I don't know if you guys ever watched Self-Sufficient Me. But the guy who does that, um, he's in Zone 9B also, even though he's in Australia. But a lot of his things are very similar to our things here in Central Florida and South Florida. So I, I'll go see. Maybe I can look up and see if he's got something on asparagus for his climate. So that's kind of a short video because I didn't have a lot of changeovers in that garden. It was mostly just like three or four different variety types of plants in there. Um, and they did really well. So there are not too many failures that way other than the corn. <laughs> but anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that one and be looking forward to the fourth part where we go outside the gate and we go to the front yard and we get to see the rainbow garden and the north garden failures and successes. Thanks. God bless and see you in the next one.